Tonight, I figured I'd let you in on a little known fact about our station. At the beginning of every semester, the producers here at WJMU have a meeting with the executive board to discuss what kinds of programs we plan to do throughout the semester. As with any such meeting, there are often some suggestions that get turned down, programs that don't quite make the cut. This year, we had quite a few good suggestions, and some that were not so good, and one or two that were just plain weird. I figured you might be interested to get a glimpse at a few of these to see what could have been. So, here are just a few examples of some programs that were proposed this semester, but ultimately rejected. And now for unbelievable stories that would make even Rose Nyland say, Okay, now that's just plain stupid. Astounding stories that will challenge you to believe it or blech. In Yazoo City, Mississippi, there lives a man named Gary Hinkelmeyer, famous for playing the piano with his feet. And, at the same time, utilizing his hands, he covers his ears. Believe it or blech! I think I'm gonna be sick! It took Brian Wilson seven months to record, mix, and produce the final version of the Beach Boys hit single, Good Vibrations. But, he could have done it in half the time, if he had used Pro Tools! When you open your mouth, it's a big put-down. Believe it, or blech! And finally, the rare prenda interior bird of the Amazon can perfectly imitate the sound of any bird or wild mammal it encounters. And yet, it does a terrible Jerry Lewis! Hey lady, pleased to be giving a hungry bird some nice bread to eat. Wait, they don't with the drawing things. Believe it or blah. I'm going to blow chunks. Join us next time. It's gonna be the next time? I sincerely hope not. As we examine the life of the one remaining man in Beverly Hills who actually does his own car maintenance. Look out, no brakes! We invite you to believe it or blah. Hello, and welcome to Sounds with Susan. Today, I'm going to make a few of my favorite sounds for you. Each sound reminds me of a monumental moment in my life. All I ask is that you listen and relax and reflect, and let this experience affect you on a spiritual level. This first one is a real doozy. It takes me back to the sixth grade dance when Jimmy Tomlin left me on the dance floor for Amanda Rodriguez. She had a pool. Well, here I go. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you all learned something about your sexuality. I know I have. This next one got me through some tough times, like the death of my hamster, or my parents' divorce, or my lactose intolerance. For this one, I ask that you not only listen with your ears, but also with your heart. Man, that was refreshing. I feel like I've been born again, and I hope you have, too. Unfortunately, we're now coming to the close of our program tonight. Be sure to tune in every Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Sunday, Thursday, and Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 6.05 p.m. to hear more sounds with me, Susan. And now for our last and most important sound of the evening. This sound reminds me of Kevin, my betrothed. He is my light, my dark, my sweet tea, and my SPF 30. I love you, Kevin. Good night. 
Shake that thing, miss. Can I, can I shake that thing, miss? Hannah better shake that thing, yeah. Donna, Donna, Jordi and Rebecca. Woman, oh get busy. Just shake that booty non stop when the beat drop. Just keep swinging it, get jiggy. Get drunk, up, percolate. Anything you want, forgot it, hustle it. It's time now for the Tom Henderson Show. And now, here's your host. Tom Henderson. Thank you very kindly. Good evening. I'm Tom Henderson. Tonight I have with me in the studio Miss Astrid Castillo, a local woman who's running for a seat in the Illinois House of Representatives. Now, Miss Castillo, what is it that inspired you to do this? I just felt it was time, Tom. After so many decades of a government being controlled by the same group of old, white, conservative men, I felt it was time that the younger generations took back the government, and that women and people of color take their rightful place so that we can actually have a government that's actually representative of our country's entire population. I suppose I can say I was inspired by a few of our current female senators, like Maxie Waters, Kamala Harris, Tammy Duckworth. I mean, they're proof that we can do it. We can have women, women of color in particular, run for office and win and bring real tangible change. Mm -hmm. Now, Ms. Castillo, in your opinion, what do you suppose the volume of this studio is in units of turkeys? What? I mean... How many turkeys do you think it would take to fill up this whole studio, from top to bottom, wall to wall? Uh, I'm sorry, what exactly does that have to do with anything? Oh, nothing. It was just a thing I've kind of been curious about. Anyway, let's talk about your platform. What are some of your policies? My platform is founded primarily on the defense of the rights of people of color, of women, and the LGBT plus community. These group of people have been oppressed and held back by the rich white men in power for far too long, and it's time we put a stop to it. Hmm. What's your stance on having narwhals as pets? Excuse me? Oh, uh, do you think narwhals should be kept as pets? Um, no. They're wild animals. Good point. And they thrive best in Arctic climates, so they wouldn't be very happy here in the summer. Narwhals are a type of whale, aren't they? I don't know. Look, I'm sorry, but this is completely off topic. You're right. I'm sorry. My mind just wanders sometimes. Anyway, you were saying about your world-famous nachos? I wasn't talking about nachos. No? Aren't you the lady who opened that new restaurant boat in the middle of Lake Decatur? Uh, Tom, that's next week. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, I'm bored. Let's end the interview and go get some nachos. Thanks for coming, Miss Castillo. Thank you for having me. I guess... On behalf of the crew down here, I say good night, Decatur, and pleasant dreams. All right, everybody, put on your pixie hats. Uh, what is going on here? It's the end of the show dance party. You're welcome to stick around for it if you like. All right, now bring in the skating narwhal. Oh my god. Unleash the tap dancing priests. Hit the music, Chaz. I listen to my mom and become a dentist? Good evening. I'm Grover Jameson, and this is World's Worst Firings. Tonight, we will be examining the firing of one Harold Phillips, Mr. Phillips, or Hal, as his friends called him, used to work at Klingenoffer's Diner in Trotwood, Ohio, under the employ of one Jedediah Handford. Here is Mr. Phillips to tell his story. I worked at Klingenhofer's for over ten years as a cashier and server. Over the years, I saw Jed Hanford mistreat many of his employees. He was especially cruel to those he wished to fire, and dismissed them in cruel and unusual ways when they least expected it. One especially violent firing still haunts me to this day. One of my fellow servers, Howie McCloud, was cleaning one of the booths, minding his own business, when out of the blue, Jed Hanford gave him the axe. Hey, puss bag! Yeah? Ah, my lungs! How many times do I have to tell you? No! Ah! More! Ah! Whistling! Ah! 
Now pack up your crap and get out. You're fired, you hear me? Fired! Sir, uh, I think he's dead. Shut up, Phillips! He's dead when I say he's dead! Now you and Brenda go out and carry this carcass out of here. It's stinking up my restaurant! Howie was one of my best friends in the world, and I had to carry his bleeding corpse out back and throw it in the dumpster. To this day, I can never look at a dumpster without becoming aroused. I mean nauseous! Nauseous! I, I misread the thing. Can we redo that? Keep going! Okay. But the most traumatic firing I ever witnessed while working for Mr. Hanford was my own. It all started on a regular old Tuesday. Me and my best friend Brenda were working the counter when another friend of ours, Marvin, walked in. What up, my dudes? Hey, Marvin, how the heck are you? Pretty heckin' good, Hal. Say, you catch the game last night? Oh, jeez, please don't mention the game in front we of- We were robbed! Yeah, yeah, Brenda, we know. Before I knew it, Mr. Hanford had grabbed me by the throat. Huh. What have I told you about fraternizing with the customers? That's it. The two of you are fired! Fired, you hear me? Fired! But, sir- Clam up, you! Take off those aprons and beat it, the both of you! Uh, really, sir, this is just a huge misunderstanding. Shut up! You get out of here, too! What? Uh, me? You're in cahoots with him! Now get out! Mr. Hanford literally tossed us out into the street, right in the middle of the afternoon rush. Brenda and I landed safely on the other side of the street, but Marvin was not as lucky. Marvin, look out! Ah! Marvin! <laughs> Seeing Marvin's lifeless corpse in the middle of the road, all dying and dead and stuff, I realized that Mr. Hanford had to be stopped. So, I came to the people from this podcast. We tried to confront Mr. Hanford about his cruel conduct, but we too were met with violence and hostility. Unfortunately, we were unable to get audio from that encounter because Mr. Hanford got a hold of and subsequently destroyed our investigator's phone. Here, however, is a reenactment based on what the reporter told us had happened. I'm not answering any questions. Now get out of here before I grind you up into hamburgers, cook you up all greasy and slippery and such, and sell you at a ludicrously high price! <laughs> Needless to say, Mr. Hanford is still at large. Hey! There you are, you rotten scum! I'm gonna kill you! What are you doing? Mr. Hanford! Mr. Hanford! Get back, please! No! No, no, don't take your anger out on me! No! No! Dramatization may not have happened. Be sure to tune in next week when we interview a woman who claims she was fired for blinking too loudly. Until then, I'm Grover Jameson. Good night. I'm Ron Henkin, and welcome to this week's installment of Where in the World is Frankie Avalon? The podcast where we try and figure out where the former king of the beach party has gone off to, and what he's doing now that he isn't a big kahuna in Hollywood anymore. So far, we have determined that he is not in Houston, Dallas, New York, Paris, Berlin, Amsterdam, Manila, Rome, Athens, or Kankakee. Right now, we're going to go live to the residence of one Mr. Carl Jackson in Blackwater, Missouri, to see what he can tell us. Mr. Jackson, are you there? I'm hearing you loud and clear, Ron. So, Mr. Jackson, what have you determined about the whereabouts of Frankie Avalon? Well, after a long and thorough search, I've concluded that Mr. Avalon is not currently, nor has he ever been, in my kitchen. He is also, at present, not in my closet or my garage. Though I still haven't ruled out the possibility that he might be in one of my wife's hat boxes. I mean, why does she even have them? She never wears a hat. Does anyone still wear a hat? Here's to the girls who stay smart. Uh, thank you, Carl. Uh, well, I think that's one more house we know he's not in. We're one step closer to finding him, folks. Now we go live to Trisha O'Rourke in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Are you there, Trisha? Why, yes, I am. Who is not here, however, is the handsome Mr. Frankie Avalon. I have searched all over this little old town, and he is absolutely nowhere to be seen. Thank you, Trisha. That's a whole town eliminated. We'll find Frankie Avalon real soon at this rate. Now we go live to our correspondent in Antarctica, Panook. Panook, are you there? Quack. Great. Now, can you tell us if Frankie Avalon is in Antarctica? Quack. Quack, 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 quack. 
Uh, would you mind speaking in English for me, Pinook? <laughs> oh, damn! If only I spoke penguin. Excuse me, I speak penguin. Oh, thank goodness. Would you mind telling me what Pinook is saying? <laughs> He says Frankie Avalon is not here. He also wants to know when you're going to pay back the ten bucks you owe. Okay, thank you, Pinook. And now, for our final check-in this week, we go beyond our mortal coil into the salubrious confines of heaven with our heavenly correspondent, St. Peter. Are you there, St. Peter? Yes, I am, Ron. Good. Now, what information do you have for us this week? Well, Ron, Frankie Avalon is not up here, so it's a safe bet that he's still alive somewhere. There has, however, been a disturbing amount of starfish joining us up here. Now, I don't know who's down there killing all these starfish, but if you could, like, get them to stop, that would be great. Uh, Mr. St. Peter, sir? What is it, Billy? There's another truckload of starfish at the gate, sir. Oh, boss, damn it! Sorry, boss. Well, thank you for that update, St. Peter. So, Frankie Avalon is still among the living, which means we'll be back next week with some more check-ins to figure out just exactly where Frankie Avalon is. Until then, I'm Ron Hankin. Good night.